English learners and welcome to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. Hey, Erica, how are you today? Marco, I'm doing really well and I'm really looking forward to today's lesson. Well, so am I because here at English Pod, we're giving you real English. Everyday English. Exactly. English that you hear in movies or in、uh, TV shows. This is English people actually use. So, Erica, what is our topic for today? Well, today we're talking about computer viruses. Perfect. So, I think it's time for us to take a look at our preview. Vocabulary preview. Okay, today we've got two words to preview. The first word is virus. 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 So, if your computer has a computer virus, it means your computer is sick, right? Actually, a computer virus is a program that is designed to harm or to damage your computer. Oh, I see. Okay.、And、well, thank you for being so technical. <laughs> That's the technical explanation. Okay, let's take a look at our second word for our preview today, and that would be froze. 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 So if your computer froze, it means that your computer stopped working. Your applications or your program stopped working and you just can't do anything. Your computer's broken. Okay, great. So let's listen to our dialogue. It's going to be a little bit fast, but don't worry if you don't understand everything. At the end of this podcast, you'll understand everything. Perfect. Let's listen. The stupid computer froze again. That's the third time today. Hey, Samuel, can you come take a look at my PC? It's acting up again. It must have a virus or something. Just give me a second, I'll be right up. I ran a virus scan on your computer and it turns out that you have a lot of infected files. But I'm quite careful when I'm browsing the internet. I have no idea how I could have picked up a virus. Well, you have to make sure their antivirus software is updated regularly. Yours wasn't up to date. That's probably what was causing your problems. Okay, anything else? Yeah, try not to kick or hit the computer. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Well, I completely understand this guy. When my computer freezes, I kick it and punch it and do everything to it. Well, I hope you don't punch it too hard, Marco. <laughs> well, it's still working, so it's all right. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our language takeaway. Language takeaway. In today's language takeaway, we have two words. The first word for today is infected file. Infected file. Infected file. Infected file. And what is an infected file? An infected file is a file in your computer that has a virus in it. Ah, perfect. That's really clear. What is our second word for the language takeaway today? Our second word is not up to date. Not up to date. Not up to date. And what is it when something is not up to date? It means it doesn't have all the most recent information. Okay, perfect. Now let's listen to some examples. Example one I need to buy a new computer because mine isn't up to date. Example two. I can't find the street. Are you sure this map is up to date? Example three. Sarah has just finished the reports and all the information is up to date. Okay, that was pretty clear. You know, you can also use this phrase. Positively, you can say up to date. Okay, for example, we can say this is a new map. This is the most up to date map. Exactly. Or if I bought a new computer, I could say I just got a new computer. All my software is up to date. Okay, great. So now let's take a look at some phrases. And it's time for putting it all together. 
putting it together. Okay, so Samuel said a really great phrase. He said, I'll be right up. I'll be right up. I'll be right up. I'll be right up. Now, we can use this phrase in a lot of different situations, so let's listen to some examples. Example one Can you help me with my computer? I'll be right there. Example two Come downstairs. Dinner is ready. I'll be right down. Example three. Hurry up! I need to use the bathroom! I'll be right out. Okay, really great and clear examples, right? Yeah, you know that phrase, I'll be right out? I used to hear this all the time when I was young. Really? How come? Well, I have two sisters and we were always fighting for the bathroom. So someone was always saying, just a minute, I'll be right out. Ah,、uh-huh, yes, that's common. I had that too when I was young. Okay, now our second phrase is, it turns out that. It turns out that. It turns out that. It turns out that. This is a great phrase. You can use it in many different situations. Marco, can you give us an example? Sure. For example, I can say, Frank didn't come to work today, and it turns out that he was sick. Yep. Or I could say, Oh, I've been feeling really sick recently. Why? You know, it turns out that. I'm pregnant. Oh my God. Are you really pregnant? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, because. Okay, so it's time for us to listen to our dialogue again, but this time it'll be a little bit slower. All right. Oh, great. This stupid computer froze again. That's the third time today. Hey, Samuel, can you come take a look at my PC? It's acting up again. It must have a virus or something. Just give me a second. I'll be right up. I ran a virus scan on your computer, and it turns out that you have a lot of infected files. But I'm quite careful when I'm browsing the internet. I have no idea how I could have picked up a virus. Well, you have to make sure that your antivirus software is updated regularly. Yours wasn't up to date. That's probably what was causing your problems. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, try not to kick or hit the computer. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, that was a lot more clear this time. Definitely, yeah, I understood a lot more. Okay, so now it's time to look at Fluency Builder. Erica, why don't you explain what Fluency Builder is? In Fluency Builder, we give you some great, useful phrases to help you express your ideas clearly. Okay, great, so let's look at Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. Okay, so in this dialogue, we know his computer wasn't working. Right. So many students would probably say his computer was acting strangely. His computer isn't working properly. Exactly. And that's perfect and that's fine. Yeah, but there's a, a really great way to say it that we heard in the dialogue It's acting up again. It's acting up again. I love this phrase, it's acting up. Yeah, it, it just, sounds really natural. It sounds really natural. Okay, we're ready to listen to our dialogue a third time, but this time it'll be at the normal speed. Try and see if you can hear these key words. Oh, great. The stupid computer froze again. It's the third time today. Hey Samuel, can you come take a look at my PC? It's acting up again. It must have a virus or something. Just give me a second, I'll be right up. I ran a virus scan on your computer, and it turns out that you have a lot of infected files. 
but I'm quite careful when I'm browsing the internet. I have no idea how I could have picked up a virus. Well, you have to make sure their antivirus software is updated regularly. Yours wasn't up to date. That's probably what was causing your problems. Okay, anything else? Yeah, try not to kick or hit the computer. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So, Marco, I really think that my computer actually has a virus now. Really? How come? Because I have been turning on my computer, and then suddenly it turns off by itself. It Mm. shuts down by itself. Yeah, that sounds like a virus. But I ran a virus scan, and there was no problem. Mm, Well, maybe your antivirus software isn't up to date. Yeah, I guess I'd better call Samuel. Yeah, Yeah, you can call Samuel to fix it. Yeah. All right, folks, we're out of time now, but be sure to go to our website at EnglishPod.com where you can leave all your questions and comments. So stay tuned for our next great lesson. And until next time, goodbye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. To stop working properly. Freeze. C. Revise. Take a look. Not working properly. Act up. Go upstairs soon. Be right up. Get. Acquire. Pick up. Look. Search. Browse. Having all the most recent information. Up to date. Computer screen. Monitor. Person in a company who fixes computers. Computer tech. Damaged or broken computer file that can't be opened. Corrupt file. Look for information on the internet. Surf the net. Computer program that allows you to go on the internet. Web browser. Let's try that faster. C. Revise. Take a look. Computer screen. Monitor. Person in a company who fixes computers. Computer tech. Not working properly. Act up. Having all the most recent information. Up to date. Go upstairs soon. Be right up. Look. Search. Browse. Get. Acquire. Pick up. To stop working properly. Freeze. Damaged or broken computer file that can't be opened. Corrupt file. Look for information on the internet. Surf the net. Computer program that allows you to go on the internet. Web browser. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Computer viruses cause a lot of problems. If you don't have virus protection software, you will get a computer virus. How can I protect my computer from getting a virus? Be right up.
I'll be right down to help you with your computer. Be right up. I'm downstairs talking to Kim, but I'll be right up to see you. Be right up. I'll be right over when I'm finished writing this email. Freeze. If your computer freezes, you'll have to shut it down. Freeze. Something is wrong with my mobile phone. It keeps freezing. Freeze. The files are not ready yet because my computer froze last night. Act up. Your computer is fixed now. It shouldn't act up anymore. Act up. This TV is always acting up. I need to buy a new one. Act up. When the weather is cold, my car acts up. Take a look. I need you to take a look at these reports after they've been edited. Take a look. Take a look at this bill. It's so expensive. Take a look. Come take a look at these pictures. You looked so young. Browse. I didn't get anything done at work. I was browsing the internet all day. Browse. Were you browsing the internet today? Browse. It's important to keep your credit card number safe when browsing the internet. Up to date. Is my virus protection software up to date? Up to date. You should look in this file here. It has the most up to date sales numbers. Up to date. The information I have isn't up to date. Hello, English learners, and welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. How are you, Erica? Marco, I'm doing really well today. You excited? Uh huh. We've got a great lesson for everyone. Yes, we have a really common situation where we're going to use real English, right? Yep, everyday English, English that people really use. And that's what we want you to learn. What are we talking about today specifically? Today, we have a really common situation that is a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> All right, an embarrassing situation. Situation. So let's listen to the dialogue for the first time, and it's going to be kind of fast. Yeah, but don't worry if you don't understand everything, because after 10 minutes, you'll understand everything. Perfect. All right, let's listen. Nick, how's it going? Oh, hey. What are you doing in this neighborhood? Do you live around here? Actually, my office is right around the corner. It was great to meet you last week at the conference. I really enjoyed our conversation about foreign investment. Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. You know, I'm in a bit of a hurry, but here's my card. We should definitely meet up again and continue our discussion. Sure, you still have my contact details, right? You know what? This is really embarrassing, but your name has just slipped my mind. Can you remind me? Sure. My name is Anna Ferris. Don't worry about it. It happens to me all the time. I'm terrible with names, too.
Wow, Nick forgot her name. Yeah, that's happened to me a couple of times, and I'm going to tell you about it a little bit later. Okay. All right. Well, let's start with our three language takeaways. Language takeaway. So our first word on our language takeaway is in a bit of a hurry. 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 So Nick was in a hurry. Yeah, that's right. This is a great phrase. So let's listen to three examples of how you can use this phrase. Example one. Can you drive faster? I'm in a bit of a hurry. Example two. I can't talk right now. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Example three. I'm in a bit of a hurry, so I'll check these files later. Okay, so it's clear now. Basically, it means that you don't have time. You're moving really quickly. Okay, perfect. Now let's look at our second language takeaway word, and it's contact details. Contact details. Contact details. Contact details. So, what are your contact details? Basically, this is the information you can find on your business card. All right. So we have like our name. Our telephone number, your email address, perhaps your mobile phone number. So all the useful information, so people can get in touch with you. Yep. So people can phone you or email you. Okay. So contact details. Great. Okay. So our third word is slipped my mind. Slipped my mind. Slipped my mind. Slipped my mind. So this is a funny phrase. It's kind of strange, right? Yeah, slipped my mind. It sounds very weird. Exactly. Okay, so now we're going to listen to two examples of this phrase. Try and see if you can figure out what it means. Example one. I'm sorry, I forgot to respond to your email. It just slipped my mind. Example two. Don't you know what day it is today? Oh, it's your birthday! It completely slipped my mind. Ah, so slipped my mind is like I forgot. You forgot something. Uh huh. So accidentally. Right. Okay. Great. Now it's time for putting it together. Putting it together. All right, Erica. Why don't you tell our listeners what putting it together is? Well, putting it together helps you put language together. It helps you be more fluent by knowing how words fit together. Great. So let's look at our first phrase today, and it's around here. Around here. Around here. Around here. So this is like close by. Close right? by. Right.、Yeah. I can say, for example, is there a bank around here? Yeah, yeah.、Um, so that's is there a bank close to here? Exactly. Now this phrase around here, we can change it a little bit,、mm -hmm. and it means something a little bit different. Right. I could say, Marco, there's a great restaurant right around the corner. Right, and that would mean there is a great restaurant on the other street. Yep. Around the corner. Yep. Great. Or we have another example. We can say around there. Around there. Right. So for example, I can say. Uh, Los Angeles is a great city. I used to live around there. So you used to live near Los Angeles. Exactly. All right. It's a really good phrase, and it's really common. Yeah. Now our next phrase in putting it together is terrible with. Terrible with. Terrible with. Terrible with. So we have a couple of examples that will show you how this phrase works. Example one. You're terrible with numbers. You can't even remember your own telephone number. Example two. I'm terrible with directions. I'm always getting lost. Example three. I'm terrible with faces. I can never remember what people look like. 
Wow, I understand that. I'm also terrible with numbers. I can barely add two plus two. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess uh, not everyone is a numbers person. Yeah. I'm terrible with uh, faces. I sometimes forget what people look like. Really? Yeah. Uh oh. So I think it's time now for us to listen to our dialogue a second time. Okay, this time the dialogue will be a little bit slower. Right. So try and listen for some of the words we've just talked about. Nick, how's it going? Oh, hey. What are you doing in this neighborhood? Do you live around here? Actually, my office is right around the corner. It was great to meet you last week at the conference. I really enjoyed our conversation about foreign investment. Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. You know, I'm in a bit of a hurry, but here's my card. We should definitely meet up again and continue our discussion. Sure. You still have my contact details, right? You know what? This is really embarrassing, but your name has just slipped my mind. Can you remind me? Sure. My name is Anna Ferris. Don't worry about it. It happens to me all the time. I'm terrible with names too. So it's more clear now. You can understand a lot better, right? Yeah, that's true. Great. So now it's time for us to take a look at Fluency Builder. Fluency Builder. So with Fluency Builder, we take some very simple phrases and show you how you can be more fluent or how you can sound more native. Yeah. Great. In the beginning of the dialogue, Anna said, Nick, how's it going? Yeah, this is a great phrase. It sounds really, really natural. You know, sometimes I hear students say, How are you? Or, How are you doing? Those are two great phrases, but this one sounds really, really natural. It just sounds more casual. Yeah, let's listen again to that phrase from the dialogue. How's it going? How's it going? Great. So next time that you find a friend on the street, you can just say, hey, how's it going? Yeah. So Marco, have you ever forgotten someone's name? Yeah, it's happened to me a couple of times. And actually, the most embarrassing situation was that I forgot a family member's no, name. No, yeah. a family member's name. We had like a family reunion and there were a lot of aunts and uncles and cousins that I hadn't seen in a while, and I just forgot one of my uncle's names, and I was... Uh, Uh-oh, that's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, so was, what did you do? <laughs> well, I had to ask one of my uh, other cousins. I'm like, hey, who is that guy? He's like, oh, that's Uncle John. I'm like, oh, man, I totally forgot. Yeah, so it was really embarrassing because I didn't know what to call him, so I just called him Uncle because I didn't know his name. <laughs> Hi, Uncle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So when that happens to me, when I'm in a business setting... Sometimes mm -hmm. what I do is I ask for someone's card. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the good technique. Yeah, or sometimes I might ask them to write down their email. Because <laughs> usually their full name is spelled out in their email address. So that's my trick when I've forgotten someone's name. <laughs> that's a good trick. And I yeah. guess a lot of our listeners can take your advice on that. Okay, so I think it's time for us to listen to our dialogue one more time, this time at natural speed. Nick, how's it going? Oh, hey. What are you doing in this neighborhood? Do you live around here? Actually, my office is right around the corner. It was great to meet you last week at the conference. I really enjoyed our conversation about foreign investment. Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. You know, I'm in a bit of a hurry, but here's my card. We should definitely meet up again and continue our discussion. Sure, you still have my contact details, right? You know what? This is really embarrassing, but your name has just slipped my mind. Can you remind me? Sure. My name is Anna Ferris. Don't worry about it. It happens to me all the time. I'm terrible with names, too. <laughs> Well, I hope that you've all enjoyed our lesson for today. And remember to check out our website at EnglishPod.com. Where you can find 
a lot of other resources, and you can leave all your questions and comments. Yeah, Marco and I are always on the site, so we're happy to answer all of your questions. Exactly. So now it's time for us to say goodbye. Bye. The English Pod Audio Review. Listen to the meaning, then say the vocabulary word. How are you? How's it going? Close to here. Around here. On the next street. Around the corner. Moving quickly, having no time. In a bit of a hurry. Information required to contact someone. For example, telephone number, email address. Contact details. Been forgotten. Slip my mind. Bad at. Terrible with. Close to there. Around there. To know and remember someone or something you have seen before. To recognize. Someone you know, but who is not a close friend. Acquaintance. Move quickly, not have much time. In a rush. Forgetting things easily. Forgetful. Let's try that faster. Bad at. Terrible with. Forgetting things easily. Forgetful. To know and remember someone or something you have seen before. To recognize. Close to there. Around there. Moving quickly, having no time. In a bit of a hurry. Close to here. Around here. Move quickly, not have much time. In a rush. How are you? How's it going? On the next street. Around the corner. Information required to contact someone. For example, telephone number, email address. Contact details. Someone you know, but who is not a close friend. Acquaintance. Been forgotten. Slip my mind. Now say the word and hear it in a sentence. Around here. Excuse me, is there a bakery around here? Around here. Did I leave my keys somewhere around here? Around here. There is a really good restaurant right around here. If you are looking for a bank, there is one right around the corner. You can find a parking space right around the corner. There used to be a supermarket right around the corner, but it went out of business. I'm in a bit of a hurry now, so I will talk to you later. His wife was having a baby, so he was in a bit of a hurry. Can you drive faster? I'm in a bit of a hurry. Contact details. Isabel, 
Do you have the contact details of our internet service provider? Contact details. Here is my card with all my contact details. Contact details. I don't have your contact details. Slip my mind. I'm sorry I forgot to respond to your email. It just slipped my mind. Slip my mind. I forgot I had a dentist appointment this afternoon. It must have slipped my mind. Slip my mind. I'm sorry I forgot your birthday. It completely slipped my mind. Terrible with. I always make mistakes with the budget. I'm terrible with numbers. Terrible with. I am terrible with directions. I always get lost. Terrible with. Every time I turn on the computer, something happens. I'm terrible with technology. Hello, English learners. Welcome back to English Pod. My name is Marco. And I'm Erica. And today we're going to be talking about a very special topic. That's right. This topic was actually suggested by one of our listeners. Exactly. So keep those comments coming because we want to create lessons that you need, that you want. Exactly. So, what are we talking about today? Today's lesson is about applying for a visa. A very, very important topic. Yes. And specifically, it's about a visa interview. Exactly. As you all probably know, when you apply for a visa, especially for the US,、mm-hmm. you have an interview. Yes. Where you have to answer some questions. Yes. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So, before we jump into the dialogue, let's take a look at vocabulary preview. Vocabulary preview. Okay, so let's talk about visa. Right. A visa, it's not a credit card. No, not Visa or MasterCard. No. So, a visa is an official document that you get in your passport that allows you to travel legally to a country. Exactly. So, with this document, you can go into a country.、Mm-hmm. Okay, so we have different types of visas. Today, we're going to be talking about a B2 visa. Right. A B2 visa is a tourist visa. A tourist visa. Yeah. This is only for the United States. Other countries may have different classifications for their visas, but B2 is for the United States. Right. So, Marco, we use a tourist visa when we want to be a tourist and just travel in the US. What about a resident visa? Well, you can have a temporary resident visa.、Mm-hmm. Like, for example, an F1. Yep. An F1 is for foreign exchange students、yeah. who go and live in the States maybe for a year or do an MBA for two years or three years.、Mm-hmm. So that's an F1 visa. You can also get a J1 visa,、yeah. which is a temporary exchange visitor. Okay. So it could be to maybe do some temporary work for two or three months and then go back to your country. So basically, a resident visa allows you to live in that country. Yeah, you can live in that country legally for a determined time. Okay, so let's listen to our dialogue. Where are we going to be exactly? In this dialogue, we're going to hear two people a visa officer and a person who's applying for the visa. Now, the person who's applying for the visa has an accent, right? Yes. But this is really good practice for helping you to understand people with different accents. Exactly. So let's listen to the dialogue and then we'll come back and explain all the great vocabulary. So, you're applying for a B2 visa. Where's your final destination and what's the purpose of your trip to the United States? I'm going to visit my brother. He's just had a baby. He lives in Minneapolis. And how long do you plan to remain in the United States? I'll be here for approximately three weeks. So,、uh, here's my return ticket for the 26th of March. And who's sponsoring your trip? My brother. Here. This is an invitation letter from him. I will stay with him and his family in their home. All right. Tell me about the ties you have to your home country. Well, I own a house. Actually, I'm leaving my dog there with my neighbors. 
I have a car at home. I know my job. I'm employed by Tornell as an engineer. Actually, I only have three weeks vacation, so I have to go back to work at the end of March. And what evidence do you have that you are financially independent? Well, I do have assets in my country. Like I said, I own a house and see, here's a bank statement showing my investments and my bank balance. I'm sorry, sir. We cannot grant you a B2 visa at this time. Instead, you are granted a resident visa. Congratulations. You are the millionth person to apply for a visa. You win. Congratulations. All right, what a lucky guy. He applied for a tourist visa and now he's getting a resident visa. Yeah, that's, that's great. But uh, does this really happen? No. <laughs> no, no, that would never happen in a, at a consulate. Okay, well, we can, we can dream that this might happen for us. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's take a look at the words in language takeaway today. Language takeaway. All right, on language takeaway, we have sponsoring. 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 So, Erica, what does it mean to sponsor somebody? When you sponsor somebody for a visa, you take care of them and make sure they have enough money. Okay. So, you, you are the one who's responsible for all of their expenses and making sure they just have enough money. Okay. So, for example, when I was 16, I made a trip to another country. Yep. And my parents were my sponsors. So, they took responsibility for your money. Exactly. Okay. Let's look at our next word. Invitation letter. Invitation letter. Invitation letter. Invitation letter. Now, this is a really important part for a visa application. Yes, very important. What is an invitation letter? Well, an invitation letter is a formal letter that a friend or a relative or maybe a business writes to ask you to come to their country. Exactly. So you're being invited for a specific purpose to the United States. Yeah. And you have to give this letter to the visa officer. Okay. Invitation letter. Our next word. Ties. 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 Looks exactly like tie, like the one you wear in your suit. Not, not quite the same, though. <laughs> All right, so what are ties? The ties you have to your country are the things that keep you attached to your country. Okay. That, that make sure that you will return to your country. Okay, so what are some examples of ties? Like maybe a house or a wife or a child or maybe some money in your bank account. Okay. Or a job even. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, a good way to think of this is imagine like a rope that's attached to you and tying you to your country, to your house, to your job, to your kids. Okay, so you can't run away. Exactly. Okay. Okay, that was clear, but let's listen to some more examples of how we would use ties. Example one. I sold my house and closed my bank account. I don't have any more ties to my home country. Example two. Alvin enjoyed being single. He wasn't ready for the ties of family life. Example 3 Diplomatic relations have improved, and the ties between the two countries are stronger. All right, it's clear now. Mm -hmm. Let's look at our next word, financially independent. Financially independent. Financially independent. Financially independent. So that means that you don't need anyone. That you have enough money. You have enough money for yourself. Right. So you don't have to ask your parents to pay for your ticket or pay for your food or whatever. Okay. And our last word for today. Assets. 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 Okay. So your assets are kind of like your ties. Right. There are things of value that you own. Things that are expensive that you own in your home country. So it would be a house. Yep. A car. Yep. Maybe stocks. Stocks. Or investments. Okay. So all of those things are your assets. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've seen a lot of great words and I think it's time for us to listen to our dialogue again. We're going to slow it down for you. Yeah. This will help you understand it a little bit better. So, you're applying for a B-2 visa. Where is your final destination and what is the purpose of your trip to the United States? I'm going to visit my brother. He's just had a baby. 
He lives in Minneapolis. And how long do you plan to remain in the United States? I'll be here for approximately three weeks. See, here's my return ticket for the 26th of March. And who is sponsoring your trip? My brother. Here. This is an invitation letter from him. I'll stay with him and his family in their home. All right. Tell me about the ties you have to your home country. Well, I own a house. Actually, I'm leaving my dog there with my neighbors. I have a car at home. I know my job. I'm employed by Tornell as an engineer. Actually, I only have three weeks vacation, so I have to go back to work at the end of March. And what evidence do you have that you are financially independent? Well, I do have assets in my country. Like I said, I own a house. And see, here's a bank statement showing my investments and my bank balance. I'm sorry, sir. We cannot grant you a B-2 visa at this time. Instead, you are granted a resident visa. Congratulations. You are the millionth person to apply for a visa. You win. Congratulations. Yay. Okay, today we're not going to do uh, our regular toolkit, like fluency builder, putting it together. No, we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to talk about the questions you will probably be asked at an interview for a U.S. visa. Yes. And the useful language that you can use to answer these questions in mm -hmm. a good way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take a look at our first question. Where is your final destination and what is the purpose of your trip to the United States? Where is your final destination and what is the purpose of your trip to the United States? So this is probably going to be the first question the interviewer is going to ask you. Yeah. So Marco, I know you have a lot of experience with U.S. visas. How should we answer this question? Well, it depends on what you're doing, right? Right. So if you're a tourist, you would say I'm going on vacation mm -hmm. to New York or anywhere. Also, if you're visiting a family member, like in our dialogue, you would say, oh, I'm going to visit my sister or my brother or yeah. my cousin. If you're applying for a business visa, then you would say, oh, I'm going to visit a company or etc. Right. So you just have to say why you are going to the States. Now, is it important to be really specific? Yeah, the more specific you are, it's probably better. So if you can name the state and the city where you're going, yep. it's much better. Okay. All right. Well, let's listen to our next question. How long do you plan to remain in the United States? How long do you plan to remain in the United States? Okay. So this is a really important question also because in your application, you have to put how long you plan to stay in the U.S. Right. It's a pretty straightforward answer. You know, two months, one month, three weeks. Right. But you just have to make sure that your answer matches... What's written in your application form. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, now let's take a look at our last question. Tell me about the ties you have to your home country. Tell me about the ties you have to your home country. Well, I think this is maybe the most important question that they'll ask you, right? Yeah, this is the most important question. This is what the interviewer is most interested in. Okay, so why is he interested in this? Because he... He has to be sure that you will not become an illegal immigrant to the United States. So that you will return to your home country. Exactly. He or she has to be convinced that you're going to return to your home country. So how can you convince him? Basically by demonstrating your ties. So showing the things that will pull you back to exactly. your home country. So if you take documents to support this bank statements, um, maybe a copy of your mortgage. Yep, like maybe your wedding certificate. Wedding certificate. I don't know, even a letter from your office, from your job. So that shows that you have to return to your work. The more things you bring, the better, even though the interviewer might not ask for, for the documents. Okay, it's just be, it's better to be safe, right? Exactly. So come with a huge file full of things. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I've had friends who've uh, arrived to the embassy with a huge file of documents and weren't asked to, to show any of the documents. Right. But other interviewers will maybe ask for it. Okay, so now let's listen to the dialogue again. And you'll hear how our traveler answers these questions.
So you're applying for a B2 visa. Where's your final destination and what's the purpose of your trip to the United States? I'm going to visit my brother. He's just had a baby. He lives in Minneapolis. And how long do you plan to remain in the United States? I'll be here for approximately three weeks. So uh, here's my return ticket for the 26th of March. And who's sponsoring your trip? My brother. Here. This is an invitation letter from him. I will stay with him and his family in their home. All right. Tell me about the ties you have to your home country. Well, I own a house. Actually, I'm leaving my dog there with my neighbors. I have a car at home. I know my job. I'm employed by Tornell as an engineer. Actually, I only have three weeks vacation, so I have to go back to work at the end of March. And what evidence do you have that you are financially independent? Well, I do have assets in my country. Like I said, I own a house, and see, here's a bank statement showing my investments and my bank balance. I'm sorry, sir. We cannot grant you a B-2 visa at this time. Instead, you are granted a resident visa. Congratulations. You are the millionth person to apply for a visa. You win. Congratulations. Well, I hope this was a useful lesson for all of our listeners because I'm sure that in one point or another, uh, in the future, you're going to apply for a visa. Mm -hmm. So now you know all the language that you need to more or less answer all these questions that you're going to be asked. Yes. And Marco, I'm sure that people have already applied for visas for the U.S., right? Probably, yeah. And I want to hear from our users any stories that they have about applying for a visa. Yeah, that would be great. I know that I have some stories to share on the comments board. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to hear your questions and comments and any suggestions. So visit our website at EnglishPod.com and Marco and I will be there to respond to you and answer your questions. Well, everyone, thanks for listening, and until next time, goodbye. goodbye.